Hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com and today we're going to talk about Adobe Color, particularly five features of Adobe Color that I really think you ought to know if you're a photographer, graphic designer, web designer, just somebody that likes using Photoshop and uses color. Chances are if you use Photoshop, you're using color. Yeah, you get the point. Uh, as you're watching through this tutorial, if you do enjoy the tutorial, hey, go ahead and subscribe to my channel so you never miss any video tutorials about graphic design, Photoshop, photography, video editing, you name it in the future. Uh, let's jump in and check this thing out. All right, so this is going to be a tutorial that does not begin in Photoshop. We're actually out here in a web browser. I'm using Google Chrome. Uh, you want to go to color.adobe.com. That's in, that's the only thing you need to worry about, this create slash color hyphen wheel. Don't worry about that. When you go to color.adobe.com, you're going to get to this page. And the first thing about this page is, well, you can click and drag any of these like points around and it's going to shift your color. You can see you're getting this five color swatch color scheme. You have these color rules you can play with. These are really cool. You can go with a monochromatic theme or a triad theme or a compound theme. Uh, that's really cool. Down here, if you know a hex code, let's say the client says, hey, my primary my primary color is 003366, which is like a, a dark purpley color. You can click on this like white triangle here and that's going to set that swatch as your base color and then uh, Adobe Color will create other colors that in theory go along with that color. You go shades so everything will then be a similar bluish purplish shade uh, to that 003366. And then these sliders here you can select any of these swatches. These sliders are the R, G, and B channels. So if you say you know what this really needs a little bit more green overall you can drag the green up and all the swatches are going to update across the board. Eh, you know what I actually want to go with the triad and well, maybe I like that color scheme. Maybe I want to shift it more maybe it needs to go in a different direction. You can really have a ton of control uh, over what it is uh, you're playing with with your colors here. Now, once you've created a color scheme that you like, it's super easy to get this over into Photoshop. Number one, you could screen capture uh, this area and just sample from these big blocks of color you have. But if you're using Adobe Creative Cloud, the Adobe Color CC here, you can save this and I can choose to, well, number one, down here at the bottom, I can check that on to publish this theme to explore, which what that means is other people can download and use this color theme. You can name your color theme, whatever you like, and then choose which Creative Cloud. I only have one login here. Uh, and then you can choose what library to save it into. In this case, I would save it into color schemes and I will name this just my color theme. Uh, maybe I'll go uh, number one or something like that. Choose save, boom, and it's that easy. Now, just a quick note, you do need to make sure that you're logged in. I'm logged in over here using my Adobe CC login. If I jump over to Photoshop, well, I can see right here in my libraries panel, this is my libraries panel, which is up here, window, libraries right there. My color theme, because that's the, that's the library I chose, color schemes, the color theme is right there, my color theme number one, and I can choose any of the colors and use any of those colors that we just created over on Adobe Color CC's website. All right, so let's head back over to the website here. Uh, one of the other really, really cool things about Adobe Color is you can go to the Explore area, you know, the place where we just published our theme. We can go explore and this is just a bunch of other people's color schemes. Um, now, of course, you can just look through what you got here, but here under all themes, you can choose like the most popular color schemes, right? You can see this sunsets cam sunset camping. There's some beautiful colors matched together. Uh, and here, by the way, this is just most popular for this month. You could choose most popular all time. And now you've got the Sandy Stone Beach Ocean Diver theme that is most popular and just some beautiful, beautiful color themes overall. And one of the cool things you can do here is just hover over any color uh, uh, color swatch or color theme, I should say, and you can choose edit copy. So if we go to that, it's going to bring this color theme into our editor where we can say change one of the colors or we could say, you know what, let's set this dark blue as the base color. We really like that. We don't quite like the selection they've got going on. Maybe let's say just in theory here, and we could go like compound and see what we get. So we can lock in a, a base color and we can then play with what somebody else has done. So that's pretty cool. And then we'd go back to, you know, if we just back we basically go back. We haven't edited the theme. We just kind of played around with a copy of it, didn't save it, so nothing happens. So now let's talk about getting some of these colors into Photoshop. Let's go back to most popular this month. I really like this sunset camping. That's just such a beautiful color. Well, we can choose to download, and if I hit the download option, that's going to download the .ase file. Maybe you're not using Creative Cloud. You just want to download the swatches and import them into Photoshop. You can download it, or you can choose to save. When I choose to save, that's when I get this option. Choose your cloud, your library. I'm going to go color schemes. Yep, that's great. I'm not going to publish this theme to explore because it's not my theme and it's already been published to explore. So I'll just hit save and boom, I've saved this into my creative cloud libraries. And like I said before, by the way, one of the things you can do if you don't like that, if you have a screenshot, you know, program, you could screenshot and just like copy this color.
color and then jump over to Photoshop and paste it into the document that you're working in. But Creative Cloud Libraries make it super easy. See, Sunset Camping is already in Photoshop. And by the way, it's in any Adobe CC app where you have your libraries and you can get to your color scheme folder. So you get these colors everywhere now. Okay, so let's talk about using these colors in Photoshop. Well, first and foremost, when you hover over a color, you're going to get it's hex code. You can see also I'm getting the CMYK value, C, C0, M62, Y2, K82. That's pretty cool. And then here on a different theme, I'm getting the RGB values, uh, but we're also getting that hex code. So that's kind of the most important thing. You get that hex code. So if you need to you know, quickly tell somebody, here's the code or copy it down for yourself, you've got it. But it's not just that. Let's say we've got this heart here uh, that I just added to this document and we want to change the color of it, but we want it to be like, not the darkest purple, but maybe like this middle reddish, you know, maroon color. Well, I'm going to select that heart layer and it's just pixels, it's straight pixels. It's not a shape layer, it's not a smart object, it's nothing. You can add a color overlay by just right clicking on that color and choose apply color overlay. And that's going to apply, you know, sort of that smart fill. It's not really a smart filter, I should say, live effect of that layer style of a color overlay to that layer. What's great about this is, you know, you don't have to worry about locking the transparency of the layer or reselecting the heart. It's just one right click choose to apply the color overlay and boom, you have that color overlay applied to that layer. Now, a really great thing when you're working with shape layers and text layers is like here, we'll select this rectangle. This is the teal colored rectangle underneath the words Adobe color. Maybe we wanna make this the darkest purpley color. All I have to do is click it, that's it. I select that layer, I click the color, boom, that's it. Maybe I don't like that, I wanna try the color next to it, just click it. I think I actually like that color a little bit better. We're gonna roll with that. With the text, it's the same thing. Just select the text layer and I'm gonna go with the lightest color. Click on that color, boom, there it is. Now that I see that, I might go back to my heart layer and I think I want the lightest color on there. I'll right click and choose apply color overlay. All right, so now before I let you go, I wanna just kinda of delve into a dirty little secret of uh, Adobe Color and maybe something that needs to be updated and fixed. Well, a couple things actually need to be updated and fixed. I don't know if you're noticing this here. When I apply this very light color to the text, it's actually, well, it at least doesn't appear to be the same color as that very vibrant orangey red color. See how like, this looks very muted and muddled up? And remember before I showed you when you hover over, you get CMYK with one set of color swatches and like RGB values with another and then the third what do we get here? We got RGB as well. Adobe Color CC is not, at least at the current time, doesn't seem to have much in the way of color management uh, implemented in it. So the colors that somebody is creating, they're creating and they look beautiful, but when you're sampling them, you might not get the exact color. And check that, this is just weird, right? I hover over that, check out the hex code, F043-3A. Let me go down here, I'm gonna choose my text, right? I've got my Adobe Color text chosen. I'm gonna go to my character panel, I'm gonna select the color. That is not the color that's been applied, yet it is the color. Here, I'm gonna click it again, just, just so you can see. See, I go with like a middle color, you can see it just blends in there. I click that again, hmm, looks a little different, doesn't it? So what's happening here? Long story short, I'm not entirely sure. I've looked into it a little bit. I haven't reached out to anybody at Adobe, but I do know that Adobe Color is not, you know, it's just, there's not really much in the way of color management going on there. So depending on like maybe your Photoshop color settings or your screen settings or whatever it is, something's going on when the color's being interpreted and transferred back and forth. But there is a little bit of a workaround here. And actually it's a bit of a pro tip in general. It's really the way that I think you should use Adobe Color and maybe it'll help you work a little bit faster with Adobe Color. Up here under window, extensions, we have Adobe Color Themes. And if I open this up, you can see you can use this just like you would the website. See, I'm under Explore, I'm going to Most Used, and here I'm going Most Used Monthly, and there's that Sunset Camping right off the top. Now, see, I have that little eyedropper tool. So I can just sample and say, look, I want that very light pinky orange color. But once more, it's still giving me this flat muted color. Very bizarre, right? Well, I'm gonna click the dot, dot, dot here, and I'm gonna choose to add this to my swatches. It's gonna do two things. Number one, it's gonna add the swatches here to my library not within a color theme, but also straight up, it's gonna add the swatches to my swatches panel right here, the last five swatches added. So let's try first, we'll just sample that really bright color from the library panel, and you can see it's it's different right off the bat. Do we have the same color? It's that F04338, and then here with our text, let's just check it out. Let's select that F0433A, so that's, that's what we want. Uh, but we could also just use the swatches panel and select that color there and it's gonna give us the same color. Now, what would be nice is number one, if uh, Adobe Color got its color act together, after all, it's called Adobe Color, this seems to be, I would think, a major issue uh, for something that's all about getting accurate and beautiful color across the board. So that's point number one. But also, it'd be really great if you could just 
Like take your swatches panel out here and let's say we have this color theme. If we could just drag that color theme over and drop it in the swatches panel and have all those colors be converted to a swatch. As of right now, the only way I know of to create an entire set of swatches from a color theme is to find the color theme in Adobe Color Themes, the extension, and to hit the little dot, dot, dot and choose to add it to your swatches and it will break it out into a series of color swatches in your libraries, but it will also save it to your swatches panel uh, right there as well. So it's a little bit of a power tip. And by the way, you can select and you can edit any of these themes and it's gonna you know, allow you to edit them just like this right here within Photoshop. You can you know, choose a color rule, monochromatic, triad, complementary, whatever you like. You can add it to your swatches right here using this button. You can also uh, set your base color from these selected colors. That would take your foreground color right here and set that as the, the base color. So I can just go like, boom, there you go. Uh, or you could choose one of these colors and make that your active color, which would in a sense, or in essence, excuse me, make that color your foreground color. So a lot of different cool options you can do here. Your little darkness, brightness slider here. And uh, by the way, you can give it a name and you can save and publish uh, your own custom theme from somebody else's theme as well, or just straight up create your own theme right here in the Adobe Color Themes panel advantageous obviously because I don't need to jump out to my web browser uh, but also just the big perk of being able to save swatches if that's the way I prefer to work uh, and also just like I get accurate color right I don't want to play this game where I'm getting this muted junk I want the beautiful full rich color uh, of the thing that I'm choosing so I go down here to my heart I'll just right click up here and choose to apply that color overlay and you see it makes a difference really uh, quite staggering but yeah if you've enjoyed this tutorial well consider supporting the channel by picking up a copy of my Photoshop course there's a link for it uh, right up there in the corner there's also a link right down in the description in the bio of this video. Really hope you guys have enjoyed it. Hope you picked up a thing or two. Adobe Color is such a powerful feature. A couple annoying quirks. And like I said, the whole not getting accurate color thing is uh, perplexing, quite frankly. Uh, but, uh, you know, work on work with that Adobe Color Themes extension there in Photoshop. And man, it's really, really helpful. And I'm partially colorblind. So somebody like me, where I can mix and muddle up colors and develop these beautiful themes, even if I only have like one or two colors that I know I'm going to be using in this project, you can build out elaborate color themes with ease, even if you are not very color coordinated yourself. So guys, for using Adobe Color, CC, and well, just creating and exploring and managing all the quirky weirdness of Adobe Color, that's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodds in tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do. And this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.